So you have started to add a virtual camera to your Zoom calls so that you can add graphics and different visual elements. But maybe you are wondering, well, what about audio? How do I make sure that if I have audio in my streaming software, I can actually bring that into the Zoom call as well? Well, that is what we are talking about today is audio routing software. And specifically today, I am going to talk about loopback and using loopback with Zoom. And we're gonna cover both Ecamm Live and OBS so you can see examples of how to set it up with both. And this will help you take your presentation to the next level, which is what my channel is all about. And if you are new here, my name is Kat and I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. Making sure you look good is one thing, making sure you sound good is another. So when it comes to loopback, the first thing I wanna say is that I'm deciding to cover this because this is what I have used, this is what I have experience with, but you do have other options. So this is not the only audio routing software, and you can definitely take a look around, do your research, see what works, but I only wanna teach something that I have used myself, so that's what I'm focusing on today. Now I know members from the community and also viewers of this channel have mentioned that they have tried VB Audio and that that has worked, so I say that's fantastic. Go and try those out, and if I have time later, I'll try those out, but for today, we're gonna to focus on Loopback. So when it comes to the actual product Loopback, you're going to go to the Rogue Amoeba website and I have a link to that. Now, this is a paid software. There is an option for a free download so you can test it out, see if it works, see if you like it. And when it comes time to purchase it, it is 99 US dollar dollars and that is a one-time purchase. This is not a subscription. So as soon as you own it, it is on your computer and you are good to go. You now have loopback on your computer and you can start routing your audio. Now, when it comes to understanding what you are actually doing, because I think at first I know I thought this is a little bit confusing. I know I wanna bring multiple aspects of audio into Zoom, but I don't fully understand what's going on. And I think when you understand what you're doing, it helps you with the setup. So I thought it was best to try and explain this in terms of a virtual camera. So if you understand how a virtual camera works, you know that you have an option to combine your graphics with your camera. So I've actually put together a little demonstration. So usually when you go into Zoom, you can pick your camera, which shows your face in the Zoom call. But with a virtual camera, you can take your camera and your overlays and graphics, put them together with your streaming software, and then that will show up in your Zoom call. Well, it works the same way with your microphone. You are in essence creating a virtual microphone to bring into Zoom. So instead of just picking one mic that goes into Zoom, you can actually combine your microphone with maybe some music and some guests, put them into an audio writing software like Loopback and have one microphone that you pick when you are in your Zoom call. So essentially you'll have your virtual camera showing your graphics and you will have your virtual microphone bringing in all of the sound. And so that is what we are putting together. Now, when would you use this? Because you don't always need to use this. In fact, for most of my Zoom calls, I just select my own microphone in Zoom and then I can add my graphics, which are all visual using the virtual camera. So when you would use this, Definitely if you are bringing guests into your streaming software, so whether that's Ecamm, OBS, or another streaming software, if you have guests coming in there, you definitely need to use an audio routing software so that if you are bringing this into Zoom, people can hear your guests and not just you. Similarly, if you have videos that have sound in them in a scene in your streaming software, you will wanna have it. If you have maybe a sound effect, you wanna make sure that that sound is coming through. And also maybe you add music to some of your scenes, like if at the start of a meeting, you might wanna have something relaxing as the countdown timer goes, or maybe you have an exercise and instead of asking people to sit quietly, you can actually have some music playing in the background. So those are some of the reasons that you would use it and when you would want to use this software. Now I am going to focus on four different setups today. So there's one way and two way. So both with Ecamm and OBS, I can share how you can simply bring your audio from Ecamm and OBS into Zoom one way. But also sometimes you want, if you have a guest on and they're coming through your streaming software, 
you might want them to be able to hear people on a Zoom call. Now, if you are in a webinar setup, maybe you're doing a panel in Zoom webinar. And so none of the participants on the call actually have a microphone. So you don't need to worry about that. But if you do have a meeting where there are other voices, you want to make sure that your guests can hear those. So I'm gonna share how you set that up as well. Now, before I get into the actual tutorial, I wanna say something about Zoom audio. So Zoom is trying to be really helpful and they are trying to modify our audio so that it's a good user experience. They're trying to cancel out background noises. They also try and make sure that one person is emphasized and another person is not. So if two people start talking at the same time, it's usually gonna pick one person and not the other. Now it's trying to be helpful, but if you are bringing in multiple sounds that are coming in through this virtual mic, I really want you to explore turning on what's called original sound. So this is a screenshot. If you go into your Zoom settings, into audio, and you scroll down until you see music and professional audio, you have the option to check this box that gives you the option to turn on original sound. So this is great for making sure that Zoom is not manipulating or tweaking or changing or altering your audio in any way. So if I'm playing music and I'm speaking, I don't want Zoom to just decide what should play and what shouldn't. I have already decided what I want that the audience to hear. Now, please, 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 if you are doing this, I want to encourage you to use headphones. And you can get discrete headphones like the ones that I am wearing right now. I have those linked. But even if you have just a regular headphones or Bluetooth headphones, you wanna make sure that you are not playing stuff out of your speaker that will then be picked up by your microphone. You don't want that feedback loop to happen. So really, I do encourage you to put on some headphones when you are doing this. Now, you have the option and the option will just be on. You don't have to use it all the time. There are going to be circumstances where it's not necessary. But as I always, always, always stress, make sure that you test in advance. Start an empty Zoom meeting, but invite a person or two, or maybe record it from another device that calls in on the call so that you can actually hear what does it sound like when it is done. But when you turn on this original sound option, what will happen is when you are in Zoom, you can see here that there is now this option at the top left, turn on original sound. So when I click that button, now original sound is on and and I can actually turn it back off again. So just checking that box allows you the option of the turning on and off your original sound. All right, let's get into some of the tutorials and let's actually set up some loop back virtual microphones. So the first one we're gonna share is Ecamm. Now I have my loop back set up so that it is empty. I have erased all of the ones that I made before because we are going to make them from scratch today. Now you might have a default one set up. You can always click the little minus and get rid of it and just start fresh. So let's choose new virtual device. Now something you will see is pass through, which you do not need for this purpose. So I would just say, let's get rid of this. So I'm gonna delete pass through. This is my sources. So this is the stuff that I wanna choose. What's going to go into my virtual microphone? Now I'm actually going to name this for strategically. And personally, I've seen a lot of different people with different names for loopback. And in my opinion, I want it to mirror my virtual cam experience. So because we are making a virtual microphone that will feed Ecamm into Zoom, I'm going to call this Ecamm Live Virtual Mic. Just like the Ecamm Live Virtual Cam, this is my Ecamm Live Virtual Mic. Both of them are coming from Ecamm into Zoom. Now you need to have the programs open that you want to use. So I have Ecamm Live open, so let's pick Ecamm Live. Now under options, it's really important that you uncheck mute when capturing. Make sure that that is off. So that is one step, but you can actually see, even though I'm using Ecamm Live, you can't see any audio. And that's because right now I'm speaking into my microphone directly, but if I were to play some music, now you can see that there is an audio source coming from Ecamm Live. So Ecamm Live is going to send any of the audio sources, whether it's your interviewee, the guest that you have on, their microphone, your sound effects, your music, 
Those will show up through Ecamm Live, but you also wanna add your microphone. So I'm going to go and pick my Shure MV7, which is my microphone, and now you can see as I speak that it's coming through. So these two are now combined and they'll come out together. And if I play music, you'll have both music and you can see my speaking, those are combined and coming out on the other side with this virtual camera. So that's, that's it. <laughs> We have set up our first virtual microphone. I think I might have just said camera, but I meant microphone. So we have now my microphone and there's, you don't have to worry about that mute when, when capturing. It's just the microphone. So this is our Ecamm Live virtual mic. So now let's go to my desktop where I've got loopback open and I have my Zoom meeting. So now what will happen is I go into my microphone area because I want to, instead of just having my Shure MV7, I now want to say Ecamm Live Virtual Mic. And I will select that as my virtual mic. So now anything that's happening here is going to show up in here for everyone that is on the call with me. So that's the first tutorial and the first step. So we have now set up one way direction from Ecamm into Zoom. So now let's go in and talk about putting it back. Maybe I want, maybe I have a guest in Ecamm and I want to make sure that they can hear any of the questions from participants on the Zoom call. So let's go back into our loop back and we're going to create another virtual microphone. So this one, I like to use the name audio from Zoom. To me, that is completely uncomplicated. I know exactly what it is. It is audio that is coming from my Zoom call. I'm going to delete the pass through and this time I'm going to pick Zoom. So I have my Zoom meeting open. I have now picked Zoom. Again, I wanna uncheck mute when capturing. Now I don't have any guests that are on Zoom right now. So I'm going to, I, I can't actually see any sound playing from Zoom right now, but similar to before, I'm also going to choose my microphone. So now I have my microphone and I've got Zoom and they are going into this output channel. So I've created one virtual microphone. So now what will happen is I am going to go into Ecamm and I'm going to switch my microphone. So I've created this new one here. So let's pop into Ecamm. I'm going to switch to my main camera and we're gonna turn on demo mode. So now you can see my desktop with Ecamm and you can see that right now there's my Sure, MV7 coming in here. So if I now drop down, I actually don't see the name because you need to refresh Ecamm. So what I have done is I have restarted Ecamm so that the new virtual microphone that I just created is going to show up. And that's something you want to test and make sure that everything is ready. So you always want to do this in advance. But now if I go down and I go to the microphone choice, I am going to choose audio from Zoom. Now you can still hear me speaking because my audio is coming in. And if anyone on Zoom speaks, that will also come in the audio from Zoom. So if you have a guest, because if you have a guest on Ecamm, they'll hear your microphone. So the microphone I want them to hear is audio from Zoom, which includes you and anyone who speaks on the Zoom call. So that is setting up your two-way audio. So your guests will be able to hear people who are on the Zoom call who speak. Now let's switch to OBS. Let's go back into loopback and we're going to now create an OBS a virtual, a virtual microphone. So let's go and do a new virtual device. This one will be my OBS virtual mic. We are again going to delete this one. We have OBS open, so we will select OBS. And again, we are going to select my microphone. Now, if you have your microphone set up in OBS and there's actually some output coming in there, that will show up here. So you're going to want to test it. Also, let's make sure we uncheck this. You'll want to test. If you see your mic coming in through OBS, then you can actually either just turn this off or you can delete it and just have the OBS coming through. So let's go over to OBS. So I'm going to share 
my screen. So now we've got OBS and loopback side by side. And I have a main camera here where I have just set up my main camera with my Sony. Let's move this over a little bit more. I've got my Sony camera, which is just me. And then I have a song. So if I start playing this song, now you won't be able to hear it, but you can see down here that there's music playing. Now let's take a look though at loopback. Nothing's happening here. So you need to make sure that you check your audio. So if we click on this little gear under the audio, open our advanced audio preferences, and this says monitor off. So we want to change this and we can change this to monitor and output. Now you can see the OBS is playing music and you can also see my voice. So what we have just done here is set up that sound. Now I also have, let's stop that song, the guest interview. So if you are bringing in a guest through OBS, you are using Skype, or at least that's how I bring in a guest through OBS. And you will, when you have a Skype guest call in and you've added them, their audio will be here. Now I don't currently have a guest, but you would see them speaking here. Same kind of thing, you can check your advanced audio properties. Right now, if it's monitor off, you can change that. However, you do have another alternative. Because in OBS, you are probably bringing in through Skype. I have Skype open right now so that it will show up as an option. You can also add Skype. So now your guests, let's uncheck that, when they're speaking on your call, their audio will go from Skype also into this virtual microphone. So when I connect this OBS virtual mic to Zoom, then I'll have the option of hearing any sound effects in OBS, my microphone, or Skype. However, if you have set up your microphone, you have your guest audio, you have other sounds, and they're all set up with this advanced audio properties where they're all playing, you could actually toggle these off so everything's coming from OBS, or you could delete these two. So I encourage you to play around, test it out, get somebody on OBS with you through Skype, get somebody on your Zoom call, and just see how's the timing, are there any delays, how does, how's the sound, is there any echo, et cetera. So give that a try. But that is really setting up your OBS virtual microphone. So now we have set that up. And if we actually go back into Zoom, so if we go back to this desktop, now we can see that OBS virtual mic is an option. So now I can pick on or pick that virtual mic. And of course, I want to turn on original sound. So now what if we want, we have guests who are on Skype and we want our guests to hear them. I actually think the simplest way and based on my testing is if we go back into loopback, it's actually pick audio from Zoom, but instead of trying to bring this into OBS, I actually just choose this as my microphone in Skype because Skype allows you to pick your mic. So instead of just picking me and my Shure MV7, I will actually pick audio from Zoom into the Skype call. That means everyone, if I have one guest or maybe multiple guests, they can all hear everything that's happening on the Zoom call, but they can also hear your voice. And that is how you get the two-way directional with OBS if you're bringing in your guests through Skype. So that is my tutorial. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this, if there's anything else that you've tried, or maybe there's something else completely that I did not share in this video that you would like to comment on, or if you have questions, please let me know. I hope that this helps you feel more confident with trying out an audio routing software, even if it's not loopback, maybe it's another. I hope that this video has given you a good understanding of how it works, how you can use it, and how you can start to take your presentations to the next level.